Hey guys, today what I'm, I'm going to do is basically walk you through a portfolio analytics tool that I have developed using Django and Python. So Python is sitting on the back end doing the calculations and Django is actually designing the entire app from a front end perspective, you know, passing on the data from uh, Python to the uh, browser. So let's get started. Right now it's on my local server. So what you need to do is basically upload the data in this system. So when we say data, it's basically your portfolio that you want to uh, view the performance and the risk and against which benchmark because you want to compare how your portfolio is performing against a benchmark. This is more from a, you know, an institutional perspective, but yes, it's important for everyone who's into the investment management industry. So over here, I can upload my portfolio. I can just go and select the portfolio file, which is a simple CSV file and the benchmark. So at the end of the video, we'll also see what this files look like. And I just give a date range. Say I want to invest, uh, say one lakh or say 10 lakh rupees. And there is a confidence level. So this is important for your value at risk as to what confidence level you want to see your value at risk. We'll select 99 and we'll do submit. So once we do a submit, what, what the backend is actually doing is actually going online and fetching for the prices of the securities and it will do your computation. So over here you can see uh, investment value of 10 lakhs. The return is 19%. This will uh, 0.19%. This will be my value after the return. I ran this at a 99% confidence level and it had run for the 366 days. There's some important value at risk metrics from a historical parameter. There's a model for computing value at risk. Then from a parametric, which is the variance covariance method, the Cornish Fisher bar, which is important, which removes the impact of cutosis and the Monte Carlo simulation based value at risk. Additionally, we are also computing the expected shortfall or the conditional VAR as it as you can see and it is it will be slightly more than the uh, VAR in terms of uh, the value because it is at it is the average of the remaining period. So from 99 to 100, there's 1% which is remaining. So the average uh, risk of that uh, area is known as the expected shortfall. Then we are computing the diversified VAR and the undiversified VAR. So what it means is basically your undiversified VAR is the VAR that you would be having in case you did not have any diversification in your portfolio. So this would be your uh, value at risk. But since you have a diversification of your portfolio across multiple stocks and multiple uh, sectors, this is the diversified VAR. So we'll come to the mathematical calculations on, on each of those in, in a later video, but this is more from an understanding perspective. The same information is over here depicted as a graph. You can only see your conditional VAR and you can see what is your conditional VAR numbers or you can also go and check your VAR numbers. I'll just toggle this out so we can see the entire screen. Then we have another components like individual war, marginal war and component war. So individual war is basically each security. So Adani Enterprise, Adani Trans Transmission, Alcaria Mine, Apollo, APL Apollo. So what is the individual value at risk of each security? Then what is the marginal war? Marginal war is basically the change in war due to 1% change in this position. So suppose this position is say 4%. If I make it to 5%, what will be my overall war of the portfolio? Then the component war is basically how much Adani enterprise computes to the entire portfolio war. So this is more from a risk management perspective. The value at risk analysis. And you can see that everything over here is getting computed on its own. You don't have to upload the prices. You just have to upload the file and give your date range. Once I'm satisfied with my risk numbers, I would want to see how my portfolio has performed on a holding period basis, what is my return and what is the benchmark return. So I've just clicked on the portfolio analytics. It's, it's going to compute based on the returns. So here you can see that uh, I have my portfolio return as say 30% and my benchmark return as 26%. The risk free rate that I have used is 5.12. That's, that's the older repo rate that I have used. Then what is my portfolio sharp ratio? 
uh, what is the portfolio's tracking error, what is the portfolio's information ratio, how sensitive is my portfolio to the index, so what is the beta, what is the alpha and what is the trend ratio. So obviously I'm not going to go into the details of all these ratios, these are pretty straightforward from an investment management perspective, you can actually google and see what these numbers mean, but uh, more from an understanding perspective and over here I can actually see the benchmark returns and the portfolio returns too individually and I can see an overlap of both of them. Now I want to see why I have you know gained 4% more than my benchmark. Why has my benchmark underperformed and why has my portfolio overperformed. So I will go to the attribution analysis of the portfolio. So this is the attribution analysis. So we have used the BF method, which is the Brinson Falcher method, wherein I am doing the analysis at the sector level. So I am seeing which sector has performed well. So over here you can see uh, the, the, the allocation to chemical sector has helped me to gain better return because the benchmark was under allocated to this sector because I was allocated and my portfolio uh, in the chemical sector, I have a higher return than the benchmark. So this is a sectoral analysis. You can see the allocation, selection and interaction effect. I can simply filter on, on any of the effects. So I will come to know that, yeah, the, the returns are higher because of some sector allocation and the returns are lower because of some under allocation. Similarly, once I am convinced or, you know, I have the clarity of the sector analysis, I'll move on to a drill down of the stock analysis, whether any stock which I had over uh, bought as per the portfolio concentration and as per the benchmark weight, if I had bought it in a greater quantity and has it helped me. So wherever you see, I'll just make it as 100 over here so I can see all the data. So wherever you see a, a positive allocation effect, you can see that it is because of the fund managers understanding whether this portfolio is going to perform well or not. So over here for each security, you will see the stock return, the portfolio return, the portfolio weight and the benchmark weight. So it's a combination of security, sector and it will also tell you the same data but at the stock level as to which stock has given you a lot of. So over here you can see the allocation effect is showing negative, there is some selection effect and there is some interaction effect. So based on this, you can actually analyze what, how is your portfolio performing. Next is a portfolio builder. So we have a portfolio builder also. So, so let's say that uh, you want to take the historical period for last one year and uh, I'll just upload my benchmark over here. And uh, you are saying that, okay, use the Nifty as an index, take the prices from this date range and uh, give me a return more than say 5%. Say example say 7%. Give me all the portfolio combinations which will likely give me more than 7% return going ahead annually. So for this we use machine based algorithms like uh, simple Markowitz portfolio theory, advanced Markowitz portfolio theory and we are going to extend this to more you know more characters and more attributes that the portfolio builder can take and more constraints that the portfolio builder can take. So suppose you want to build your portfolio and you want to exclude the uh, the mining sector. So you might just have another drop down over here saying exclude sectors, include sectors. So that's that's going to come in the next version. But yeah, as of now we have a portfolio builder where you just upload your index over here, give the start and the end date for the portfolio to run the simulations. You can run 1000 simulations, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million up to 1 million is supported. Obviously, I'm doing it from a laptop, so 1 million will take a lot of time to execute. Uh, obviously, the GPU is not that great, but I'll just run it with a thousand uh, simulation and show you what the concept is all about. So it will take some time. It is going uh, on the Internet, looking for the prices, doing a combination and permutation and, you know, running thousand simulations and giving coming up with optimal portfolios. You can see the back end work over here it's it's going on so 50 out of 50 that's nifty 50 all stocks have been completed the prices have been downloaded and now it's building the portfolio 
so this is what the machine does at its own end we don't have to really get into it and you'll get this beautiful efficient frontier which is basically showing the risk at the x-axis and the return so at a given level of same level of risk you would want a higher return right so that's the concept of efficient frontier so th this is the number of portfolios that the system has simulated you can see thousand portfolios over here these are different thousand portfolios and based on that the system has generated a minimum variance portfolio a minimum variance portfolio is a portfolio which has the least volatility considering the period that you had given for the last year so based on the last year prices going ahead if this uh, portfolio has to give you a return which has the minimum variance or minimum risk so this is the portfolio so the system is saying that expected return is around 23 percent just read it as 23 it's in decimals and the expected volatility will be 28 percent so portfolio volatility could be 28 percent but you are going to get around 23 percent return and these are the allocations that you have to do across all the stocks so adani ports bajaj auto bpcl and so on and so forth and then we have another portfolio which says highest sharp ratio so over here you can see though my portfolio return uh, portfolio risk is 28 percent which is less than the new portfolio which is the optimally risky portfolio at 30 percent but if you see in this portfolio even though i have a higher risk but i have a much much higher return which is 29 percent so if you just compare 28 to 23 that is a return of 23 percent at a given volatility of 28 percent a portfolio with 29 percent return and a 30 percent uh, volatility will be much more optimal because we have an optimal sharp ratio what is sharp ratio it's your portfolio return minus the risk free rate divided by the portfolio standard deviation so highest sharp ratio will give you risk adjusted better portfolio so it is telling you that if you want to achieve somewhere around 29 percent and you're okay to take a 30 percent risk of your portfolio this should be your likely allocation now this is a pure quant based approach this is a pure quant based approach i can show you some of the code that i have written for this uh, yes over here we have some django libraries we take the file we take the data points we run the prices then we do covariance matrix of the stock returns into 250 because we are assuming that there are 250 trading days in a year uh, then what we are doing is basically uh, running a portfolio into a loop okay so how many number of loops that is what you have you are giving from the front end that is thousand simulations and we are generating weights so once we are generating the random weights and based on that the random weights will be used thousand times because you have run, run a thousand simulation and it will keep on creating portfolios and what will it return it will return the minimum variance portfolio and it will uh, return the optimum risk portfolio once these portfolios are uh, computed it will throw it on the front end and you will get it as part of the uh, front end portfolio optimization uh, we have also introduced fixed income attribution so i'll just also show you what do we mean by fixed income attribution just go to my desktop just bear with me for some point yeah so this is a bond data sample sheet that we had created so till now we were focused only on equity right but uh, a, a large part of fund managers especially international fund managers they deal in the bond portfolio right and bond has its own peculiar risk which are different from equity they have multiple risk factors like interest rate risk factors the credit risk factors the spread change and all those things so once we have the bond data, basic bond data as to what is the cash flows, duration, convexity and everything, we can run a fixed income attribution for the portfolio also, for the fixed income portfolio also. So over here it is saying that your total return on the portfolio is 3%. 1% of that is coming from the income effect, which is basically the coupon on your bond. 4% is coming because of the shift effect. So we have uh, understood that the parallel shift and the non-parallel shift impacts the returns of the portfolio. So over here we are seeing that we have a positive 4% portfolio that means the, the, the yield curve went parallelly down and we have a 4% return. We also have a twist effect which is the curvature of the yield curve. So now we know that because of the shift effect we have 4% and because the shift was not almost parallel it was little, little curve, curved and because of that we have the twist effect which is the curvature effect 
and that also went in our favor that means the yield curve must have you know flattened flattened that's why we have a positive return because once the yield curve flattens your price increases then we have a benchmark spread change which is a negative return so over here what we are saying is basically due to the spread change or due to the credit risk there is a negative return on the portfolio so if you see over here 3 plus 4 7 7 plus 1 8 8 minus 1 7 7 plus 6 13 and 13 minus 10 is 3 so this 3 is made out of all these 5 components so what is selection effect selection effect is the residual so if you see 1 plus 4 is 5 5 plus 3 is 8 8 minus 1 is 7 7 plus 6 is 13 so this is my impact now we know the entire return is only 3 percent and I am getting a 13 percent return over here from my effects that means as per the uh, you know uh, logic the only residual effect which could be the selection effect that is the residual uh, effect with the visa visa benchmark so these are the under allocation to securities which have performed well and because of that you have not got a better return similarly we have ISIN wise data so these are some sample ISINs that we had used and obviously you can see the same thing in graphical format over here so we have the selection effect so we can see yeah though your overall selection was not that great but yes there were three bonds which have given you positive returns because you had selected them well against the benchmark but most of the benchmark selection of the portfolio manager is not good so in effect it's saying that the benchmark is returning 13 percent but my portfolio manager has returned only three percent despite the yield curve you know shifting in his favor it is because the portfolio manager has bad or not appropriate selection skills which bonds to be selected and which sectors to be selected and so on and so forth so this attribution basically helps the fund manager and the uh, uh, risk managers to identify the overall risk of the portfolio so this was a short video to make you understand as to how we uh, how the institutional players actually do the analysis we have read and learned about this in various subjects i also show you the file that i was using so this is my portfolio file i have the symbols over here and the weightages and the sector so this is important because we were doing sectoral attribution similarly we have the portfolio uh, sorry the benchmark which is which over here i have used the nifty benchmark so that's why i have around 50 securities and uh, that's how i've used and i've used the actual weight of the nifty so this is the way we will be able to compute the entire data points if you like this let me know in case you need more information you want me to code something else thank you